There are many important nutrients when it comes to mental health, but these fats absolutely need to be a foundational component of your nutritional strategy if you're hoping to improve your depressive symptoms. Hey there, I'm Jess, I'm a clinical nutritionist, and today we're gonna to be talking all about omega-3 fatty acids. We're gonna go through not only why they're essential, but why they're very important for mental health depressive disorders. So we're gonna get into a little bit of science in this video so that you can understand the mechanisms of action at play when it comes to their role in mood regulation. And then I'm gonna go through some very practical tips for you on how to increase these fats in your diet. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around till this point because I'm actually going to be talking about something that I think gets missed a lot even in my profession and it's really important when you're trying to increase these fats through your diet to make sure they're bioavailable so we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's first start with talking about what exactly omega-3 fats are. Omega-3 fats are essential fatty acids which basically means that we have to obtain these fats through our diet. Maybe you've heard of the essential amino acids before these are similar in the sense that our body doesn't synthesize them so we have to get them through our diet omega-3 fats are polyunsaturated fats which basically means that they're liquid at room temperature as opposed to a saturated fat which would be like coconut oil or butter or lard that's solid at room temperature omega-3 fats are often referred to as our anti-inflammatory fat, while our other essential fatty acid, omega-6 fats, are often referred to as the pro-inflammatory fatty acid. Now, this is a drastic oversimplification of these fats. We really need both in our diet. The issue is that in our standard American diet today, or in many diets overall, we consume far greater omega-6 fats in quantity compared to omega-3 fats. So what ends up happening is we have an overabundance of sixes, not enough threes. That creates the pro-inflammatory state in our bodies. So the more omega-3 fats we have in our diet, generally the greater anti-inflammatory effect that we're going to have overall. But let's talk specifically about why these fats are so important for our mental health and particularly for mood regulation. Omega-3 fats, first and foremost, support brain structure, function, and development throughout all stages of our life. These fats are abundant in the cell membranes of the brain cells, which not only preserves their health, but makes them important for aiding in communication between brain cells. And that's one of the reasons why they're incredibly important for memory, cognition, and learning. A lack of these fats, particularly in ratio to an overabundance of omega-6 fats, is not only going to cause inflammation throughout the body, but it's gonna cause a lot of inflammation, particularly in the brain. Inflammation in the brain is a serious cause of mood disturbances, particularly depression. This is why studies that have investigated the effect of omega-3 fatty acids on depression have found pretty good clinical outcomes when it comes to the effect that omega-3 fatty acid supplementation has on depressive symptoms compared to placebo. Now, in addition to reducing inflammation in the brain, omega-3 fats may also decrease depressive symptoms by supporting healthy neurotransmitter function. So let's talk about that. If you need a quick overview of neurotransmitters, they're chemical messengers that transmit communication between nerve cells in the brain. They play a critical role in regulating mood, behavior, and cognitive function. There are several key neurotransmitters involved in depression, like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, just to name a few. Research has shown that omega-3 fatty acids may help improve neurotransmitter function in these three ways. One, they increase the actual production of neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which are feel-good and motivational neurotransmitters. Two, they help enhance neurotransmitter release from brain cells, which makes them more readily available to use in the brain. 
Three, they improve neurotransmitter reception function, which are the proteins that receive signaling from neurotransmitters in the brain. So to summarize, omega-3 fatty acids are incredibly important for brain health structure and function. They reduce inflammation in the brain and they help improve neurotransmitter function, all of which are critical for mood regulation. Now, I mentioned earlier on that I wanted to talk to you about something that I believe a lot of people completely miss when it comes to these fats, and that is that not all omega-3 fatty acids are created equal or provide you with the same benefit. There is a plant form of omega-3 fats called alpha-linoleic acid, known as ALA, that you get from foods like walnuts, flax, chia seeds, and hemp seeds. But these fats actually need to be converted into EPA and DHA or more bioavailable omega-3 fats before they can readily be used. Unfortunately, this conversion has an incredibly low efficiency rate, where about 21% of dietary ALA is converted into EPA, and only around 9% is converted into DHA in women. In males, it's even lower, where approximately 8% of dietary ALA is converted into EPA, and only 0-4% to is converted into DHA. There are a lot of factors that go into this conversion rate, a huge one being genetics. So you may naturally have an efficiency rate that's a little bit better than some of which I mentioned, but you might have one that's actually a little bit lower or worse, and there's not really a good way to know. And that's why I don't recommend that people rely on ALA forms of omega-3 fats for their omega-3 fatty acid consumption. Now, there's nothing wrong with those foods that I mentioned, like walnuts and chia seeds and flax seeds. I just think it's important to know that those alone aren't gonna get you the requirements that you need in order to have this antidepressant effect. It's also just good to watch out for marketing ploys and purposes where people specifically market something as being an omega-3 fat, which I guess in reality isn't untrue, it's just kind of missing a really important piece of the story. So now that we know some foods that are high in ALA, let's go over some foods that are high in EPA and DHA, which are the fats that you really want. Dietary sources of these fats are gonna be those fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, cod, trout, herring, sardines, um, and if you don't eat fish for any reason, algae is the one plant-based form of these EPA and DHA fats that you can get. There is a small amount of these fats in eggs, meat, and dairy. It's also really cool to note that if you are getting an amount from eggs, meat, and dairy, while well, it's not gonna be high as it is in fish, if you get really good quality sources of these foods like pastured raised eggs and grass-fed beef, they actually have been shown in studies to have a higher omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. So the quality really affects the omega-3 content of these foods. On the other hand, let's talk about foods that are high in those omega-6 fats. Those are really gonna be industrial vegetable oils, okay? So any vegetable oil like canola oil, grapeseed oil, safflower oil, cottonseed oil, soy oil, etc. There's also small amounts of these fats and really healthful foods like nuts and seeds and chicken, but if you wanna try and reduce the overall amount or quantity of omega-6 fats that you're eating, the biggest bang for your effort is really gonna be decreasing those vegetable and seed oils. Which brings me to the next point, which is what is the easiest way or the few easiest steps that you can take to either increase your consumption of these omega-3 fats or improve your three to six ratio. So there's three things that are really gonna have a huge effect. One is going to be increasing your consumption of fatty fish, okay? Two is going to be decreasing your consumption of those vegetable oils. And a side note to that would be to decrease the amount of times that you're eating out a week. One thing that I always tell people that I work with is that, you know, unfortunately we can't live in a bubble, but every time that we go out, they're likely using canola oil or another vegetable oil because it's just very cheap, right? So when we're at home, one way that we can take control of our situation is by only using other oils like olive oil and avocado and coconut oil. But 
If we are someone who eats out a lot, then decreasing the amount of times that you're doing this may also significantly decrease the amount of vegetable oils that you're consuming. And the third one is to take a fish oil supplement. There is a reason why fish oil supplements are so generally recommended for overall health. This is gonna be the best way that you can start to not only increase your omega-3s, but potentially work out these ratios. So for example, also when I work with people, I let them know that they might have to spend three to six months high dosing an omega-3 fish oil supplement, and that will ultimately help balance out those ratios. And then in time, they can either one, reduce the amount of fish oil that they're taking a day, or two, see if they can maintain that balance by relying on their diet. Now, quality does matter when it comes to fish oil supplementation. I generally don't recommend that you get these at like a drug store or a big box store, and you wanna get them from a brand that specializes in making fish oil supplementation and products, or else you might just be consuming rancid fish oils. There are a few brands that I recommend, like this one and this one. Yes, that is my dog's fish oil. He needs fish oil as well, but I have taken it when needed to in certain circumstances. <laughs> I also wanted to let you know that one of the studies that looked at the clinical effect that omega-3 fatty acid supplementation had on depressive symptoms found that the supplementations with higher doses of EPA resulted in a greater antidepressant effect. So when looking for a fish oil supplement, you wanna look for one that contains a decent or higher EPA content in there. I have went ahead and did that research for you and found some products that I believe are gonna be perfect that I linked in the description description below so you don't have to go searching for anything. I've totally vetted them and these ones have a great abundance of EPA and DHA but have that extra EPA boost in there as well. Hopefully you learned something today about omega-3 fats and depression. If so, let me know what you learned in the comments below. I would love to know. And if you wanna know more about other foundational aspects of nutrition for depression, then I highly recommend checking out this video up here. That's gonna be all about blood sugar actually, but how it's one of the most important things to keep a stable mood throughout your entire day. I'll see you next time.